This is video number seven on probability for actuarial exam one slash p. You can see we're moving ahead here to question 13 this time. It's going to be about, once again, conditional probability. We'll be solving for a conditional probability with a Venn diagram, but now we're going to have three events. Okay, so it is going to be a little bit trickier. Then I want to do something that's important to me. I want to generalize the problem. I have this extra part where I talk about generalizing it. If you want to get really good at math, it's important to learn how to generalize things to learn how to think that way. Um, for one thing, it helps you see connections. For another thing, it helps you solve really infinitely many problems at once and bring unity to different subjects. So let's look at the problem statement. An actuary studying the prevalence of three health risk factors, three health risk factors, denoted by A, B, and C, within a population of women. For each of the three factors, the probability is 0.1 that a woman in the population has only this risk, risk factor and no others, so A but not B and not C, or B but not A and not C, or C but not A and not B. Furthermore, for any two of the three factors, the probability is 0.12 that she has exactly those two risk factors, but not the other. So A and B, but not C, A and C, but not B, or B and C, but not A. Next, the probability that a woman has all three risk factors, A and B and C, given that she has A and B, is one-third. Okay, we saw this phrase in the last video, number six, given that, that's your big hint, your bright light saying, hey, pay attention, this is a conditional probability. Okay, so we'll talk about the intuition of that again. The goal is to calculate the probability that a woman has none of the three risk factors, not A and not B and not C, Given that, this is a conditional probability as well, she does not have risk factor A. So we're also solving for a conditional probability. The extra part that I've added here, two questions. How is the solution affected if the probability in the first sentence, the 0 0.1, is an arbitrary value, I'm calling it lambda. Furthermore, for what values of lambda does the solution even make sense? I mean, certainly, well, probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. Certainly lambda could not be negative or bigger than 1, but maybe there's an even more restrictive condition on lambda because, like the answer, for example, also has to be between 0 and 1. That would be a more restrictive condition. All right, so let's draw our Venn diagram. Again, it's going to have three circles for these three events, A, B, and C. There will be more things to label. So here is the circle for having risk factor A. You want these to overlap. Here's the circle for risk factor B. And here's the risk factor, uh, the circle for risk factor C. Just take it step by step. Where does this point one get labeled? This is when she has only one risk factor, like A but not B and not C, meaning that would be a point one right there. B but not A and not C would be a point 0.1, and C but not A and not B also gets labeled with a point 0.1. What about the point 0.12? Maybe you can pretty quickly guess where this goes. This is the probability that she has exactly two risk factors, A and B but not C. That would be this region right there. A and C but not B, right down here, or B and C but not A. Then we have two unknown regions, evidently, that we're going to need the fact right here for, and perhaps, well, we all, almost always need the fact that probabilities all add up to 1. I'm going to call this x. That's one thing I want to solve for. And I could call this y, but to be consistent with what I did in the Mathematica, I'm going to call it z. You'll be happy to know, by the way, in the Mathematica, that I'll do at the end, that I'm, I'm not going to make a Venn diagram this time. I'm going to talk about the generalization. All right. So, what do we want to do? Um, we should find x and z. That's going to be necessary to help us solve the question. Uh, probably first find x based on the way this is phrased. The probability that a woman has all three risk factors in a, b, and c in here, given that, given that she has a and b. a intersect b is this wedge right here. So it's like you've shrunk the sample space. Okay, It's no longer all the women. It's those women who have risk factors A and B. 
you shrunk it to this wedge, and you're really after the relative proportion of this amount divided by the total. And the total is the sum of those two, x plus 0.12. So one third must equal x over x plus 0.12. Now actually this equation is simple enough that you can just guess the answer pretty quickly, I hope. Can you guess it? Think. 0 0.06? Yeah. 0 0.06 divided by the sum of 0 0.06 and 0 0.12 would be 0 0.06 divided by 0.18, 6 eighteenths, or one third. That is the answer for x. You can also cross multiply if you're feeling you're not confident in your guessing skills. And get this, subtract x from both sides to get this, and get the same answer algebraically. So there's your value of x. And now to find the value of z, use the fact that all the probabilities, the ordinary probabilities, have to add up to 1. This is a conditional probability here, this ratio. These things in the diagram are ordinary, regular probabilities. They have to add up to 1. Uh, these numbers that were filled in are 0.3 plus 0.36 is 0.66. Plus 0 0.06 for x is 0.72. And then z is going to be 1 minus 0 0.72, 0 0.28. There is z. Now we're ready to solve the problem in question. Calculate the probability that a woman has none of the three risk factors outside of a and outside of b and outside of c, in other words in z, or using that probability z, given that she does not have risk factor a, she's outside of a. The answer, if you think intuitively, is going to be 0.28 she has none of the three risk factors, given that she does not have risk factor A, divided by the sum of these four numbers, 0.28 plus 0.1 plus 0.12 plus 0.1. And that's 0.28 divided by 0.6, 28 60ths, 14 30ths, 7 fifteenths, which with your calculator you can round to about 0.467, which is answer C in the sample exam, and that is the correct answer. Okay. Before we go to the Mathematica, let's, as we've been usually doing, let's emphasize some notation here and the formula from video number six. This is a conditional probability. If we use conditional probability notation, uh, you would write it as what? It's the probability she has all three risk factors, A and B and C, given that she has A and B. Given the vertical line means given that, given that she has A and B. This conditional probability that we were trying to solve for is the conditional probability that she does not have any of the three risk factors. She's got none of them, not A and not B and not C, given that she does not have risk factor A. Okay, that's the probability we're after, notationally. If we use the formula, one of the two formulas we talked about in video number six, this would be the same as the ratio of the probability of this thing intersected with this thing. A prime intersect B prime intersect C prime intersect A prime divided by the probability of this thing. Uh, in this particular case, this thing right here is a subset of this. Um, a prime intersect B prime intersect C prime is what's outside of all three circles, and A prime itself is what's outside all three plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this. So we actually can just write the top as this. That doesn't typically happen. And if you think about these probabilities uh, from the diagram, you see that we get the same answer, because this probability up there is the 0.28 and this probability down here is the 0.6. It's the same answer. Okay, We're just emphasizing that the formula technically does work, but of course as has always been the case so far, the Venn diagram has been quicker. Let's go to the Mathematica now, and again you'll be happy to see I won't be making an actual Venn diagram in the Mathematica this time. Instead I'm just going to focus on the generalization where lambda represents the point one, the probability of one risk factor but not the other two, and it's the same, okay? So I'm not, you know, this is not a complete generalization, it's just a partial generalization. 
an example of a generalization that you could do. Lambda equals 0.1 in the problem. How does the answer depend on lambda and also um, what values of lambda does this even make sense? Um, let's just go through the problem problem solving process again. We're still assuming that this is 0.12. I could have generalized this by calling this some other letter as well, but I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible while still generalizing. X was the probability of being having all three risk factors. It's the same thing I labeled X in the uh, Venn diagram that I drew. And we are supposing that one third is this. Okay, so just like before, we can solve for X and still get 0 0.06 just like before. Okay, I could generalize the one third here as well, but I'm not. Again, I'm keeping things as simple as possible. Z, however, will be different. Okay, it won't be point, what was it before, 0.28. It'll be, it'll depend on lambda. It's one minus the sum of the probabilities of the regions that were outside of A. Um, there was three, um, or excuse me, that are outside of, um, that were inside all three of them. A, union B, union C. There was three times 0.12, uh, there was a 0 0.06, that was the x, and then there was the 3 times lambda, which was 3 times 0.1 before, to get this. Again, before lambda was 0 0.1, so this was 0.28 before. And then the probability of A prime is this thing here. The ratio is the conditional probability that we're after. So here is the answer to the generalized question. What is the new probability of the thing in question of not having any of the risk factors if it is given that you don't have A as a function of lambda? in terms of lambda. Since it's a function of lambda, we can graph it, and we can see what ranges of values it makes sense for. It's a, you know, it's a rational function of lambda. Its graph is not going to be straight. It will be a curve. What curve is it? it looks like this. It's a bit bigger. There is the graph of the answer as a function of lambda. And as far as making sense, lambda certainly has to be between 0 and 1. Uh, and the output of this function, since it is a probability, also has to be between 0 and 1. When lambda is 0, it's up at a 0.6 something. As lambda gets bigger, it goes down in value till about, you get to about 0.19. And if you solve for this, where this is 0, it's actually 0.193 repeating. So it makes sense for those ranges of values of lambda. And the dot is at the particular value of lambda that we were concerned about. When lambda was 0.1, the answer was 0.46 repeating. Okay, 5, what was it? Uh, by seven fifteenths, that's what it was, okay? But it's interesting to, to try to get lessons out of this as well. It's a decreasing function of lambda. If that the point one got bigger, that was outside of those, um, that was in A but not in B and C, et cetera, um, then the answer gets smaller. Does that make sense? The, the relative probability that we are after gets smaller. And I think the key thing is that, um, well, this thing gets much smaller compared to this thing. That's what happens as lambda gets bigger toward 0.19. Thanks for watching.